YouTube, my name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Here you go, dude. Cheers, Martin. <laughs> I've had a delivery. Um, it's a fellow who's been watching the channel just for ages. I think he, he was here right at the start, actually. Martin Megan. He sent me my spoon as well. <laughs> um, he sent me this, I'll show you in a sec. But basically, everything that I film in here is filmed on my phone. Uh, you know, it does 4K, and it? You know, it's not all that. Um, but it does the job. Um, and I had a, when we went up to uh, Doghouse Customs, or the Shed of Dreams as it was at the time, I was chatting with Kev up there and he recommended the Zoom, F, uh, was it Zoom F1 field recorder or something? So I got one of them and that's what I've been using. But they don't like being dropped on the floor. And I broke it because I dropped it on the floor a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but Martin sent me this. Um, can you see this? Uh, a wireless go microphone system. How cool is that? I think this is what Craig used. I don't know. But it looks like it's a transmitter and a receiver. I think you can, looking at the picture, I think you can still stick a little microphone in there. But look! I'm happy with that. Oh, I'm really happy with that because the well, the combination of Mrs. Woman, man in his van, windy days when it sounds like there's an angry man trying to get in through the shutter doors, <laughs> using a microphone, you can cut all that out. So this is gonna this is gonna be brilliant. Thank you, mate. I really do appreciate this. That is epic. Um, I'm gonna. Um, I ain't going to use it in this video because so I need to charge it up and work out. I'll probably need to get an adapter lead as well for my phone. But that is going to really, really help out. Um, comes in a little case and stuff as well, so I can keep it nice and safe. And then we get some decent sound on these videos, hey? That's brilliant. There's somebody else as well I've got to thank you. Um, Lynn. Lynn Saunders. She got in touch with me um, and she goes, because uh, she's been... Um, uh, uh, hubby Martin watches the channel and he's been following the, the build on the mill um, and she got in touch to go well hubby's got like a, a big rotary table that he, he never uses do you want it? <laughs> so I oh, yeah go on then so um, I gave the fellow a shout um, and really nice guy he's a biker as well and uh, th this is the bike that he's got and he's put some hours into this look at all the polish work on these cases Right, there's hours and hours and hours gone into that, let alone the paint job and stuff. You know, it, it looks different. I quite like it actually, I think it's all right. So anyway, he's got in touch. Well, I got in touch with him, I can't remember which way. And he's got a, it's a massive thing, it's a 10 inch rotary table, which is probably about the biggest thing I could get on the bed for the mill. And um, basically there, there was, the story goes that there was somebody or other having a big clear out or you know business shut down is just getting rid of it and loads of jippos wanted everything in there so they could just wait in and get paid and he went no i'm not having that i've got no use for it but i'm not having that so he bought it um and he's never used it he's got no need for it so he's offered it to me he's in slough so somehow i need to get it from slough to here and he weighed it <laughs> he goes yes yeah, about 38 kilos <laughs> so that's a big heavy bit of kit as well but that is going to be champion on that because I'm like the rotary table on the little mini mill that I was using was brilliant yeah you can put all nice curves and stuff into it you can you know do pockets of bearings you know, all sorts of stuff so that is going to be mega I, I still need to sort out getting it up here because it can only be picked up on a Saturday and not many people do that but once I get it here that's gonna well <laughs> that suddenly opens up a whole load of things that I can make on the mill once I get it going so thank you Martin I really do appreciate that he hasn't sent me a picture to stick up because he reckons he's not that photogenic <laughs> but you know his bike looks alright I'll give him that 
Right, so what am I doing today? Well, I want to carry on with the forks for Asbo. Um, we had loads of troubles with, there's a, on the end of the damper rod, there's this little brass bit on the end. <laughs> and it is just dinked on the end as well. That goes up through this cap. Um, and that's got the screw bit on that you adjust your rebound damping with. The only trouble is, is it, all, it was chewed up to hell and it wouldn't go back through the hole. You have to wind it through the casting. And it was just all mushroomed over and it weren't going anywhere. So I've had it off in the lathe. I had to drill it out as well. So that's a lot shorter than it used to be. And I'm making a new one. So I've basically got to drill and tap that, cut this off, stick that in there with thread lock so it ain't going anywhere. And that way I've got a new adjuster. I'll just, I'll leave it long and I'll just trim it down to the appropriate length once it's all together. I am waiting on a set of O-rings to come because there's an O-ring that needs to sit on here. I believe there's another one there. Memory serves. I'm sure there is. There's a recess for it anyway. <laughs> um, and we can get them all back together again, but I can't assemble it fully and shove the oil in and everything until I get those O-rings. So hopefully that won't be long. But we can get these done. And it'll probably be included in this video, actually. I'll just send it all out at the same time. Right. Let's get on with it. Lot, but it will do for now. This is going to get shortened up a little bit once I get the right sizing and everything else. Um, where are you? That's how they do it, isn't it? So basically, it's just like a stubby little bit with a groove for the um, O ring to sit in and then threaded on the end to go in here. So, first things first, does it go in there? Yes, quite happily. And does it screw into that bit? Yes! And it'll all bottom out. Cool, okay. Let's um, give these a quick clean. Where's that uh, cleaner gone? Um, mm, mm, I had some, where's it gone? Oh, I'll do. Just want it clean for when I thread lock everything in place. So you can come off. Blob on there. That'll do. The only thread lock I've got is this medium 
medium strength, 243, but it should be fine. So we can squid in there. Snug him down. Should be the adjuster repaired. Right, O ring. Um, it'll do it. That's the trouble with having a machine mark right at the end of the street. I've got um, an O ring kit coming, but I want to get this done. <laughs> so I just went and got another one. A little bit of grease just to help it. And you can sit down in there. Right then. Let's see how that goes. So you should, in theory, Two O rings, happy days. Uh. And he should go in. So this whole assembly is just in here loose at the minute, as you can see. So he needs to get fixed back in. It has all been cleaned and everything else. Um, just need to get it shoved back in. So, I have another cup of copper washer on the bottom of this bolt. Simon Rolls, he's the fella that we're getting to, he's really good with suspension and all that. He knows K-Tech and Olins and blah, blah, blah. Where are you two? Where are you getting there? Um, so yeah, he's like Mr. Suspension. And um, of course, we've all been in lockdown. As soon as lockdown finishes, he's off on a, he's off on a jolly. He, he booked himself in a track day at Alton Park. Which is good, I understand why. Everyone was itching to get out. Um, actually, let's give you a, a bit of a squirt. Um, so anyway, he booked himself on this track day. Come on.
and going down. Ah. Get in there. Yeah, Simon Rolls, he's the, he's Mr. Suspension basically, he's the fella that we're getting to set up Jixit when we build all that and I'll probably get him to have a stab at Asbo in that as well. Um, this is just doing the front end swap so I can get it on the road and have a go and see what's what. But Simon Rolls is Mr. Suspension basically and uh, we've only recently come out of lockdown. As soon as lockdown was finished, that's it, he booked himself in on a track day. <laughs> that's it, I've not been on the bike in ages, I'm going. So off he goes to Alton Park. Um, and he was messaging me and all this sort of stuff. He was having a whale at the time. He sent me a picture of the bike that he was, he was riding. <laughs> this is the bike. Now, I don't know about you, but... If I'm on a track, hooning it round Alton Park, giving it large through deers leaving, wheeling everywhere and God knows what else. It, giving it absolute beans and then you have a look behind you and see how much room you've got and you see a fella chasing you on that thing. <laughs> What's going to go through your head? It's, uh, oh, hang on a minute. I thought he was allowed to break the speed limit on a track day. Well, it's a race track, isn't it? You'd have another look, and he's still there, he's chasing me. He don't look very happy either. <laughs> Best to back off, eh? I bet Simon Rolls came away from that day with like the fastest lap time out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're looking to get into racing and wondering what colour to paint your bike, consider day glow yellow and blue. It might just help the places that you get and you walk away with a few trophies. <laughs> right, that's actually not too bad. It feels like... It feels like it's full of oil. I'm not getting any bubbles and stuff coming out of it now. The oil level has definitely dropped. It's all quite nice and smooth in that, so that's good. And slowly, oh, let's top you up. Um, where are we? Oh, it did go down quite a bit, didn't it? All right, so push him down, we'll fish you out again later. Where's my clock? Is that close enough? I don't know. Yes. Right, this is the awkward bit because you've got to hold this flat. And pull on this. And it's really stiff because my syringe is knackered. Come on. It's got to be an easy way of holding this. Right. Come on. And all you're listening for is a... Because <laughs> then you're sucking in there. I didn't fill you up that much. There we go. Left him out. This didn't move, did it? 
Where are we? Uh, 50, 60, so yeah, that's fine. So, 78 mil air gap. Cool. Uh, a few things it does state, um, which you know you need to sort of be aware of. Ego screw there, which is lovely. So when you're checking your um, four call level, it's got to be done with the, you know, like the the inner assembly, like the damping assembly in place, but no springs or anything else. Um, obviously, if you're packing other stuff in there, it's going to change the height of your oil and blah blah blah. But you knew that already, didn't you? <laughs> so, what we're going to do is have this rod up. Come on. There we go. He is going in there like that. Screwing down. So he's bottomed out. Um, and this was all loose when I took the took the forks apart. So basically, 14 mil spanner, top and bottom. I'm supposed to do it up to 35 newton meters. I haven't got a torque wrench that looks like a spanner, so I'm having to do it this way. Ish. Right, so then the spring can go on. And the coils, it does stay, you have to go at the bottom. It's got to go that way, where they sort of narrow up. Ordinarily, if the spring is the same width all the way along it, it don't really matter which way up it goes, but you know, I mean, I've had some forks apart in the past where one's been one way, one's been the other way. I mean, you would at least stick them in the same way, wouldn't you? Um, so anyway, it goes in there. So close calls to the bottom, because there's obviously like a plate that sits on. So he's in. Happy days. Then we've got a washer. That's just a guide washer for this tube that then goes on. And there's another guide washer and like this slotted jobby. I don't know what you call it, it's a slotty washer, isn't it? But he's gonna go in like that. Right? That nut sits on top like that. Happy days. And then this whole thing just gets drawn up. And it will tighten it down, obviously. Started at least. Um, I can't remember what size it was.
Right, it's just nipped up. Nothing more than that. It will get tightened up properly once it's back in the yolks. Right. Yeah, it's definitely slower. Oh, but it's quite nice, you know. That'll do. I don't know why I'm at the bottom. That was all the way in. So this is compression. Yeah, easy to compress. There isn't a massive difference from all the way in to all the way out. There is a difference, so the valve is obviously working, but all stock suspension is just built to a budget, isn't it? On the race bikes that we have, we'll change all the valve in or put cartridges in it and all sorts of stuff. And you could get a much bigger range of adjustment and a much finer adjustment as well. So the only way to upgrade these forks is going to be to put a cartridge in it. But the stock, you know, they're way better than what was on Hasbro. Um, so it's going to be an improvement. Um, plus I can adjust it. Happy days! Don't need any of that. That's junk. That's one down, one to go.
Right, so that's them two done. They're all back together. I've done things a little bit differently, because why wouldn't I? Um, the problem that I had is with these flaming adjusters on the end. So if you look at that, um, I made that one as it normally is. So it pokes out the end, it's got a slot in it. You shove a screwdriver in, turn it, you muller the end, and then I've got to go through it all again just to get the bugger out. <laughs> so on this one, I tried something a little bit different. Basically, it's it's flush with the um, flush with the top of the preload caster. I don't know if you can see that, but basically, it don't stick out. Can you see? Um, the idea behind it being is that essentially the the preload adjuster will sort of help it from stop mushrooming out as you turn it. That's the idea anyway. I don't know why they don't do it like that in the first place. There's probably a good reason why. I can't think of one. Um, it ain't gonna be anything to do with water getting in there and pulling and everything else. There's two O-rings in there, so no water's getting through. So, but I figured just having it in set like that is gonna help to stop it from mushrooming out. So, like I say, this is a test bed, so we're just gonna try stuff out. I'm gonna give it a bash and see if it works or if it doesn't. Um, and ultimately, I'm gonna remake those little brass adjusters anyway. I'd rather have it all as one piece. That's the way it was designed in the first place, um, rather than having a, an insert sort of thread locked into it. Um, so it'd be better to have it all as one piece, but I can't make it at the minute because the thread at the bottom is a 10 mil diameter by one mil pitch. And I haven't got a die for that and I can't single point thread cut it on Chuck Norris because Jamie needs to do his thing with all the electrics and stuff. So I've got the ability to reverse it without disengaging the gearbox. So we're just going to give it a bash and see what happens. I mean, it's a test bed after all, isn't it? Right, let's shove these back in and uh, see where we go from there. Which one's left? <laughs> right, you can come out of the way. I'm definitely going to shove that um, 1200 swing arm in it. Definitely, just because it opens up a whole load of options as far as ties go. Uh, get the room. is definitely something that I want to make um, for a couple of reasons really. One is I'm itching to have a go at something on the mill <laughs> and that would just be a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant thing to do. Um, so I'm probably going to have a go at making my own top yokes. Um, but the reason being is these, these forks are like 50 mil shorter than what was stock so the idea is, um, is I want to try and get some of that back because we've been monkeying about with suspension and the dog bones and all sorts of other stuff to see what the differences are. And if you, if you missed any of that, there's videos for it and everything else. So you can see what we're trying to do. And this is just a test bed at the end of the day. Um, but these are 50 mil shorter. So that is going to affect uh, the geometry of the bike. Now we're going with different sized tyres as well. Um, the Daytona and the Bandit share sort of similar sort of um, uh, tyre sizes and everything else. So that is going to change things slightly as well, but I'm still going to be short in the front. So what I'm thinking of doing is um, making my own set of top yokes, um, which sort of drop down at the sides. So the idea is because there's this little angle here which is quite cool. What I want to do is to move this down further so that it's it's sort of sloping. Um, and that way we can get some of that. Oh, I want to check that one. No, I didn't. That way we can get some of the missing length out of the forks back because essentially we're just moving the forks down a bit more. So I quite like the idea of doing that and it will be a brilliant little project to have a crack on the mill with. Okay. Um, but that way I can get 
because I don't like the way this is slitted at the front either. <laughs> I don't like that the slits are, are here. I just think it looks a bit bleh. It'd be better to have them on the back here where they're out of the way and you can't see it from the front, I think. Um, well, apart from that, that's where all the wind and weather and road muck and everything else is coming from. Same thing on the bottom yokes here. So I might be making my own bottom yokes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll just try it, won't we? Basically, I want to come up with stuff that works, that doesn't cock about with the geometry of the bike, that makes it handle, stop, and just be nice at a ride. Um, and then we can go about making it look really, really good. So, which way do you go for it? That way? Yes. Mr. Man in his van is back again. <laughs> All right, so that's three. So, rebuilt set of forks. Done. They didn't stay organised for very long, did they? <laughs> I do like these spanners, they are quite good. Um, so anyway, there we go, that's it. Um, I am going to go with that band and swing arm. I have been chewing it over and going over the different options of tyre sizes and blah, 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 blah. Part of it is running a bigger uh, back tyre. That's going to lift the back of the bike up. But you know, there's stuff that we can monkey about with at the front. It doesn't look like there's a massive amount of travel in the front forks because of the bottom yoke, but there is. Um, but if I am gonna, you know, there's, there's enough there basically is what I'm saying. Um, but if I do go with like the drop yoke on the top to get some of the, some of the um, geometry back, you know, the length of the forks, one thing I'm tempted to do is to sort of do the inverse on the bottom set of yokes. I don't know, I just think it could look quite good. That would frame a headlamp really quite nicely. I don't know, it's all just ideas at the minute. Um, start off with, we just gotta get the flaming thing working and handling right and you know, all that other stuff. So that's what the focus is. Um, it is just a test bed for now. And then once I finish jigs it, it's all getting pulled apart and it'll be a project build. Um, but I want to know that everything is as it should be and that the geometry is going to work and that the forks and the suspension and the dog bones and all that other stuff ain't going to cause problems because we had a proper nightmare trying to sort all that out on Jixit. Steve-O just went, oh I like those forks and I can afford them. I'm having them, they're going on the bike. There wasn't a thought about, you know, is it actually going to work? <laughs> and that's where we've had quite a lot of troubles. So I don't want any of them with that. The other thing is, once I have got it all sorted, we are going to be doing a frame jig. I've already started work on it and designing it, so I know, you know, how it's all going to go together and blah, blah, blah. Exact dimensions and stuff, I don't know, because, you know, it's, it's all got to be based off, off ASBO once it's all stripped down and I've just got the frame to work with. But, you know, I'll know the axle points, the pivot points, the engine mounts, the headstock angle, the, all that other sort of stuff. And I can make the frame jig to fit that. Um, it will be an adjustable frame jig, just because then I can do different sorts of frames as well. But I can get it all set up to this frame, mark it all up so I know if I want to do something based on a GSF 600, this is where I set my frame jig and then just have at it. Um, and if I wanted to do a bobber later on, I could do a bobber or anything else. I'll just change my jig about. That'd be fine. I really don't see the point of keeping these in a fancy little case. I'm just going to chuck them in with the rest of my spanners. <laughs> it's always fun hunting for a 10 mil, isn't it? Right, you're in the bin. I'm never going to find the spanner that I'm after now. Need loads of them in there. <laughs> that be, that's going to be an interesting thing to do, actually. Common swap, I've never done it. Apparently all you need is new top hat spaces down the side here. Then, you just make new ones to fit the frame. And everything supposedly just bolts on. I know it doesn't, because on here it's got a, 
um, a little guide for the uh, the rear brake to run in. There ain't one on that. <laughs> it's got like a torsion cloth. But so someone's telling me porkies. Anyway, we'll get to it. But anyway, that's where I'm leaving it today. It is coming together, slowly but surely. More slowly than surely. But we're getting there. One thing at a time. That's one less thing I've got to do. And then I can go out hoon it. And then we can finish off jits here and then we can both go out hoon it. That'll be good. I'm looking forward to that day. Right, that's where I'm leaving it. Thank you ever so much for watching. Really do appreciate all the comments. Um, everybody chipping in and stuff. I, I really do enjoy going through them. And you know, at the minute I can still answer everybody and everybody does get a response. Um, it is getting more awkward. There's more people are doing it. <laughs> but I love the comments, they're gold, so keep them coming. Um, and we will see you on the next one. Later!